So let's continue with what we were doing, but now we're going to kind of work backwards. So you're going to be taking this original parent function and we're going to do all four of these things to it. So let's start with the easy stuff and we're going to talk about how your graph is shifting. Okay. So we talked about before, the number that you have on the inside is going to shift that graph left and right. So if we're talking about left 21, okay, remember shifting to the left, we actually want to make that number on the inside a positive 21. And shifting up, if you remember, that's that number added or subtracted on the end. And if we're shifting up, we are going to put a plus on the end of that. So this is just simply looking at how it's changing, how it's shifting. Now, I, see, I saw on your answer key, they had a, a plus 12 in there, and I think that was just a typo. Um, it should be a 21, okay? Now, we're going to talk about how we are going to be incorporating the stretching and the reflecting. Now, if you remember, the reflecting, okay, that is simply focusing on including a negative sign. Okay? So if we want it to reflect over your x-axis, we're going to be including a negative sign. We're going to be including it on the outside of your absolute value bars. Okay? So reflecting, that's just using a negative symbol to do that. Okay? So that's where you're going to be seeing it showing up there. The stretching part, Stretching horizontally by seven fourths. Okay. Now, when we are stretching horizontally, okay, the horizontally means that we're going to be including the seven fourths on the inside of the absolute value bars. Okay. So that number is appearing in there. Now, what makes this slightly unique here is when you put it on the inside, okay we actually have that number show up as the reciprocal of what it has, so 4 over 7. Now, I don't do a whole lot with these kind of talking about it in this way, um, so I'm not super familiar. It's been a while since I've actually taken Algebra 2, um, but in terms of why it does that, I can't specifically say, but that's what it does. Um, so horizontally means you're doing it on the inside, and then this number just gets flipped. So you would just do the reciprocal. And that would be your final solution there. Okay, so yeah, once again, that, that 12 that was in there is supposed to be a 21. Okay, all right, same kind of idea. All right, so we'll talk about the shifting part first because that is the simple part of just including your numbers. All righty, so we have y equals, and think about when you have the um, square root, remember, that's just something to the one-half power. So we're still doing the same type of thing. Like, this is still parentheses. So shifting to the left, 9. Okay, that means we're going to have a plus 9 on the inside. And shifting up, 21. Oops. Hold on a second. I think I might be wrong about that one. I think when it comes to absolute, or, oh my goodness, square roots. Let me pull up Desmos again. Um, so I think that's going to help us here. Let's get rid of these things. So once in, if you're ever in doubt, use Desmos to even just fiddle with your function. So if we wanted to shift to the left, let's look what happens on the inside here. If I do plus 9, well, let's shift it to the left. I think the answer key is incorrect. Again, so shifting it to the left, you do want that plus on the inside. So no, I'm still right. <laughs> so the, you want this to be a plus 9 on the inside. Your answer key has a, has a minus. Um, and then up 21, we're going to put plus 21 on the outside. All right. Now let's talk about shifting. Okay. So previously, in this one over here, okay, shifting horizontally, you are putting that number on the inside of your brackets or parentheses or whatever. When you want it to stretch vertically, okay, that's when you are putting that value on the outside. Okay, so we're going to put, if it's vertically by 3, the 3 goes on the outside. Okay, um, and then reflecting over your x, oh, now I see, I think I see what they did here. 
reflecting over the x-axis. Okay, so you once again, reflecting means we're incorporating a negative symbol in some way. But if we wanted to reflect over the x-axis, that negative sign goes on the inside. All right, now I see what they did. Okay, so we have the three here. You are making what is on the inside here negative. So when you look at your answer key, you'll see technically that negative sign has been distributed to both. Now this is technically correct. Um, depending on how they want it, they might want you to write it out like that. And I made that absolute value, or that square root very large. Um, and then have it be, oh, I'll move my face, have the B plus a 21 there. So that's why. I just didn't get to that part in the steps yet. All right, so that's what we're looking at in terms of just writing it out. Think about when things are shifting, you're just adding and subtracting numbers. When you're doing reflecting, you need to be using a negative symbol, whether it's inside or outside, depends on what axis you want it to reflect over. Okay, X axis, you're putting the negative sign inside. Okay, and if you want it to reflect over your um, other one, you do it on the other side. Okay, all right, let's talk about factoring. Now here, this is what we would call a difference of squares. Okay, and the way that we go about simplifying a difference of squares, and I can do this with an easier looking problem. So let's say we had um, x squared minus 25. Okay, difference of squares, meaning I can take the square root of each one of these pieces and get something nice and neat, okay? The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 25 is 5. And the way that we would simplify this would be that you're using those two terms, an x and a 5, an x and a 5, and then one of these is going to be a plus, and one of these is going to be a minus. So that's just the general setup when you're dealing with difference of squares. Let's take the square root of each term, put them each in a set of parentheses, one plus, one minus, okay? So I want you to keep that set up in mind when we look at something that looks a little bit more gross, okay? So I'm gonna do the same kind of concept, all right? We're gonna take the square root of each one of these pieces, okay? So now we mentioned before that when you have the square root of something squared, it's just whatever is inside that set of parentheses. So if we're taking the square root of this piece, it's simply just 3x squared plus 11. Okay. And then here, the square root of this piece, well, the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of x squared is x. So think about now what we did. We took, I'm going to zoom over a little bit here, we took those two pieces, and put them in two sets of parentheses. We're gonna do the same thing, all right? So I'm gonna take this piece here, and the reason why they're using brackets originally is because they've already used a set of parentheses once. So you, in math, you don't wanna use parentheses and then parentheses, because they can kind of get lost. So if you use parentheses and then brackets and then parentheses, you kind of see like the sandwich of what's used where. Okay, so I'm gonna set up my parentheses. I'm gonna take this one here, which is 3x squared plus 11. Oops, I even just said parentheses and I, all right. And then we have 3x squared plus 11 again. I'm going to put the 4x over here on both. And then you have one, pu one plus and one minus. Now, there's nothing going on with exponents or numbers on the outside of those brackets. What I'm actually going to do is just rewrite these sets of parentheses without the brackets. So 3x squared plus 11 plus 4x and 3x squared plus 11 minus 4x. Now when you're factoring, you want to keep it in standard form. And standard form is where you have your term with the largest exponent all the way down to the smallest or a constant, which is just a number without a variable. So I'm going to rewrite these in that way. So we have 3x squared, 2 is my largest exponent, then that would be 4x and then 11, and then we would do the same thing over here, 3x squared. This time we have a minus 4x, 
and then plus 11. Your answer key has these parentheses reversed. It does not matter the order, just as long as you have all of the pieces on the inside. So take the square root of each piece, put them both in a set of parentheses, one plus, one minus. That's all they're doing. It was just a little bit lengthier of a problem, okay? All right, let's talk about imaginary numbers now. Um, I love imaginary numbers simplifying them. Once you get the hang of it, it goes really quick. So I want you to think about what a fraction is. Okay, you have some part out of a whole. Okay, and typically we're used to seeing whole numbers here. Okay, so some type of whole number. When you have an imaginary number in your denominator, that's not a whole number. So my issue here is we need to make the denominator into a whole number. Okay. And the way that we're going to do that is by multiplying by that denominator's conjugate. Okay. Now, a conjugate is the same terms in the expression, but you're just seeing a different sign. All right. So let's say, for example, I had 3 plus 2i. The conjugate would be 3 minus 2i. If I had negative 7 plus 4i, the conjugate would be negative 7 minus 4i. Okay. So you see how all you're doing, you're keeping the terms the same, but you're just changing the sign in the middle. So what we're going to do now is figure out what that conjugate of your denominator is. So that conjugate is going to be, we have a 7, we have an 8i. Since there was a minus there, this time we're going to put a plus. All right, so we have 7 plus 8i. Now we're going to have to multiply both top and bottom by that expression, by that conjugate. Because we can't change the value of the fraction, we can change how it looks though. Technically, top and bottom, we're multiplying by 1. It's the same value that we're multiplying up top as we're multiplying on the bottom. So I like to break this up into a numerator section and a denominator section. Now, when you multiply stuff in your numerator, you can have imaginary numbers as part of your answer. That's okay. That denominator just has to be a whole number. So that's nice going into this. The expectation for your denominator is that you should get a nice whole number. Okay? And all we're going to do now is we are going to FOIL, or you might know it as distributing. I'm not sure. So we're going to just take each term in that first set of parentheses and multiply it out. So we have 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 8i gives me 24i. 4i times 7 is 28i. And then lastly, 4i times 8i, we have 32 in the beginning. And i times i is i squared, okay? So let's go through now and combine like terms. I see these two in the middle can be combined. All right, so we have 21 plus, well, 24 and 28 give me 52. And you treat them like like terms. Treat i like a variable in this sense. Just keep the i at the end, all right? And then 32, well, i squared is special. i squared is actually equal to negative 1. i itself is the square root of negative 1. So if we square i, you're squaring a square root. And we mentioned before, when you do that, both the root and the exponent go away. So that's why we can take out the i squared and put in a negative 1. And so now we have 21. This becomes... I'm just going to eliminate here to save space. This becomes minus 32. So 21 minus 32 is negative 11. And we have 52i. Remember, I said the i is okay. This is going to be in a numerator. So I'm going to write that over here to get going as part of my answer. So we have a negative 11. I'll choose a different color than green. Choose blue. All right, we have negative 11 plus 52i, and we need to figure out what that denominator is. So let's do the same thing that we just did, okay? We have 7 times 7, 49. 7 times 8i, we have 56i. Negative 8i times 7 is negative 56i. And then we'll do the same thing here. Negative 8 times 8 is negative 64, and then i times i is i squared. So the reason why we use the conjugate, you can see here, this pair of terms in the middle, they actually cancel out. They simplify to zero. So now you have 49 minus 64. Now, i squared, we said before, is negative 1. So we really have 49 
plus 64. And when you add those two together, 